1961, Clarence Aikie handed over the reins to newcomer coach Paul Violas, while Aikie would go on and coach football at the University of Rochester. Violas continued the football tradition at CA through the 1964 season. Well, uh, after Clarence, Paul Violas took over the program for two years, and I had known Paul since I was five years old. He was a Cheshire boy. I went to U of R and played, played at Candagua. And Paul put in the old single wing, and they were pretty successful. Familiar players included Tony DiMuzio, Gary Edinger, Hap Kutry, and Putt Moore. Coach Violas, uh, coming from the University of Rochester as a former player, I think he brought about the first uh, flanker back, so split. Uh, I remember uh, we weren't complicated, but that was the first time we used split ends and uh, flanker backs in the situation where we up actually opened it up a little bit and uh, used some more complicated defenses. That came about with uh, Coach Violas. It was a lot simpler back then. We ran a, a single wing uh, offense. So uh, it's just uh, the old typical uh, uh, cloud of dust and uh, five yards, and uh, it was uh, it was very basic. We did, we didn't we didn't elaborate too much on offense. The 1965 season saw the promotion of Dan Moore to the head coach position. And I coached with Paul up until 1965, when Paul decided to go back to the U of R and get his doctor's degree. And then after that, I, uh, I was a head coach here from 1965 to 1975. A Syracuse University graduate and champion Orangeman football player, Moore would lead the CA Braves to a Central Western Conference Championship at Evans Field. Moore would repeat this performance in the 1966 season with an 8-0 record. Uh, coach Dan Moore was a young coach uh, who just had only been out of Syracuse for a few years. He played on a national championship team back in 1959. We were national champs, but it really never sunk in until after the, uh, you know, after the game was over and, and uh, people started talking to us about you know, how, how, how great a thing this was. So that was, uh, that was an exciting time. Uh, he was our varsity coach as, uh, uh, as my junior and, and senior year. We won the CWC championship, which we used to play in the Central Western Conference back in 1965 with a record of seven and one. And my senior year in 1966-67, we were eight and zero and won that uh, uh, CWC championship also. So when Danny took over, he stayed with the single wing for a couple more years, and they were very successful. But you know that kind of got was outdated. And from there, we went to uh, you know kind of a spread. Uh, I. Uh, with a wing and uh, a flanker and, and started throwing the ball a little more. So Danny was the one that really took us from the uh, single wing into more of an updated offense, which is still being run today. Dan was real good with conditioning. He worked hard and uh, a lot of running up and down the hill there at Evans Field, a lot of uh, full speed practicing. Back then in the late 60s, 70s, uh, the home field was on the opposite side and there was this rickety old uh, press box. We actually got up on the roof to take films because had, at that time they had the radio people inside doing play-by-play. -play. Moore would coach the Braves through the 1974 season with a winning record for the football program. One thing I'm proud of, I never had a person come up to me and say that they didn't enjoy playing football. In 1975, Ross Nelson took over as head coach for the CA Braves. Nelson, a longtime art teacher in the Canandaigua schools, would lead the football program through the 1978 season. Ross Nelson was just a tremendous person and a great football person. Uh, he was my freshman football coach. He had been the freshman football coach in Canandaigua for years. And uh, then to come back and be able to uh, get my first coaching job as him as a head coach was uh, a lot of fun for me. Well, Ross Nelson was a great man. I had the opportunity to play uh, for Ross as a freshman in high school. And, um, you know, he was, he was a person that loved the game of football, loved coaching it, loved the kids. And it was just a, it was a great opportunity for me. And I, you know, I, you know, I just uh, can't say enough good things about Ross and, and what he meant to me and what he meant to the, the Canada football program. Ross was uh, like a Pied Piper. He'd get all the, he was a junior high teacher. 
He got all the kids from junior high to get out. That's why we had such a large program. We had three teams and nobody in Finger Lakes had three teams. He taught me uh, an awful lot about football and uh, just being around him and, uh, and his personality uh, was, it was just a lot of fun and I learned an awful lot that year. Nelson's love of teaching in the arts as well as his sensible yet firm demeanor brought a unique coaching style to the football program. And with Ross Nelson, it's, it's treating you like a person and not a number. And, and uh, you know, you really wanted to get out there and work hard for him because he was, you know, working for you. And you figure, you know, in return, you could work for him. So, you know, with that, with that group of coaches, it was uh, a lot of fun to be with. Uh, he commanded respect from his players and from his coaches. And uh, I think he got it from uh, everybody that was around him. Um, he knew what he wanted to do. Uh, he always uh, had the kids prepared and uh, uh, it was just an awful lot of fun working for uh, Ross Nelson. Ross was an art teacher that coached freshman football here for a long time under Danny. And Danny decided to get out. Ross took it for two years and Ross' health started to fail a little. Sadly, Nelson would succumb to illness just a few years later. This admired and much respected man would be remembered in the 1980 CA yearbook with this passage. To have known Ross Nelson was to have known kindness, sensitivity, humor, and a host of comparable adjectives. A regular at CA sporting events, Mr. Nelson could also be found sketching quietly at Sonnenberg Gardens, for he was an amazing, diverse man. As head football coach at Canandaigua Academy, he managed to become a special part of our school. He instilled in us a sense of fierce pride in our school and our individual accomplishments. He taught us to believe in ourselves and to play by the rules, Ross Nelson was one who was special to all of us.